Tad is a problem solver. He's constructive. He's always trying to see how to make something better. He really loves people and he wants to do whatever he possibly can to help everybody. Have a good time. A very unassuming guy. I think the first impression I had of him was I want to go out and buy him some clothes. Uh, because Tad was in jeans and he never, he, you wouldn't find him in Neiman Marcus shopping there. A thoughtful, probing, almost relentless uh, study of, of any uh, opportunity and process and an extraordinary uh, good taste in people. He's a remarkable person, a slightly too conservative for me, but I think everyone who knows him understands. Tad can see other viewpoints, but not for terribly long. <laughs> he is an articulate conservative and impatient with what he thinks is destructive political correctness. I love talking to Tad about his own personal history, which is a great American success story, you know, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps. And, you know, it's clear everything he is and everything he does today comes directly out of that. I was born in Krakow, Poland, which was the ancient capital city. The family moved to Warsaw. My mother and father were on a business trip in the United States. When they got to New York and kind of had a chance to think about what was going on in Europe at that time, I think they got a sense about it that maybe the people that were living in Poland and Eastern Europe probably didn't get. I made a real significant effort really to subsume my early childhood and become, you know, an all-American kid. I mean, I, I fell in love with the United States of America. I didn't want to be thought of as a refugee. My father asked me uh, when I was about 17 about college. Uh, he said, you thought about college? I said, yeah, I'm going to UCLA. He says, you're going to Stanford. And I said, yes, sir, because that's the way it was. I was in a European authoritarian household. I think what Stanford does is they really work very hard at making a complete person. There's so many things in life that are reflexive, and a lot of those things that, that I think about uh, or try to think about really probably came to me from my Stanford days. He had this large piece of land in Sacramento that he was telling me about in 2006. And as the breakfast evolved, he said to me, boy, this is getting a little bit pricey. Maybe I ought to sell the whole thing. I, of course, thought nothing of it. But he did tell me that he sold it a couple months later, and that was six months before the housing market crashed. Pretty awesome timing. Fast forward two years to another breakfast. He's telling me the same piece of land is, is being sold for 20 cents on the dollar, and he thinks he ought to buy it back. Sure enough, he does. He called the bottom. Pretty good round trip on one large property. I think my first real entree into the big time in terms of being able to deal at levels that I'd never really experienced before was when Joe and Stephanie Caret engaged me to essentially manage their wealth. Proudest or most significant moment uh, was actually a, a apartment complex, a large complex that, that I acquired with Joe and Steffi Caret. The foundation had about an 80% interest in that property. We just sold the 80% interest recently for approximately $100 million. The cost of that 80% interest in 1971 in cash was approximately a million five. He's very deliberate. He likes to manage all his own properties. The curb appeal and the maintenance is really tight. He plays for the long game. My first really major philanthropic gift anywhere was here at Stanford when, uh, when I contributed uh, a significant amount of money to the uh, purchase of the Barone collection of uh, Judaica from Salo Barone, who was the father of Jewish studies at Columbia University. I remember when he got the Scopus Award many years ago, which is given by the Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and that's the highest honor in Jewish philanthropy. I would say that my philanthropy has been driven by 
First of all, an ever-increasing sense of Jewish awareness. Uh, certainly that drove my uh, major involvement in Poland and Israel and in, in the local Jewish world. He has helped me in some of my campaigns and others from the Catholic faith. When I was one of the uh, campaign leaders for endowment campaign at Santa Clara University, he and the Caret Foundation made a seven-figure gift to Santa Clara University. He's very passionate about education. He is someone who believes that we should do everything possible for kids who otherwise might not achieve their full potential. If he gave $10 to a poor person on the street corner, he'd first ask him what he was going to do with the money. He wanted to know where it was going and how it would be spent, and his giving has always been goal-oriented. He came over to breakfast at my house on campus, just the two of us there, and I made him scrambled eggs. He loved them, and he keeps talking about my scrambled eggs, he wants to come back and have another invitation. And I said, look, I taught you how to do it. Are you so dumb you can't learn how to keep and cook scrambled eggs? <laughs> My daughter, Anne, was at a dinner party, and she happened to be seated next to Tad. And she said to him, you look a lot like my dad. And so she happened to be, at the time, founder of, and still is, founder of 23andMe. It's a genetics company. So she sent him a kit. He was related. And he was related to her. But more importantly, of course, for me, he was related to me. We were all shocked. So I was selling an asset once, and he wanted to buy it. And he's a tough, tough negotiator. So we were within, I mean, I'm not going to say a dollar, but it had to be close to a dollar. And we fought like cats and dogs. So we finally said, we're so, so close, let's get this together. And we did, we made the transaction and we've been laughing about that ever since. You really can't put your finger on a single legacy because the thing about Tad is he's had such a big imprint. I mean, at Stanford, so many things, it's not just seeing the Toby Corrett signs in different places, but knowing what's behind them, whether it's Hoover or Hillel or the tennis courts or the law school, he's just, he's been, a contributor to everything. There's no question that building the museum in Warsaw has to be his single most remarkable achievement because of the time and energy and effort and his commitment to really highlighting the contribution of the Polish Jews through the thousand years of history in, in Poland. It's essentially become my life's work here in the last decade or so. Its meaning I think is it goes beyond its meaning to me. I think that this has great meaning to the Jewish people as a whole. I think he would like to be remembered as he will be, as he deserves to be, as a man of passion for good deals and for good causes. He has the legacy of support for worthwhile ideas. He has the legacy of the kind of philanthropist who doesn't simply give resources. But if it's worth giving resources, it's worth spending some personal time. To be able to escape a very bad situation that probably would have meant certain death for me and to integrate myself into the American culture seamlessly and be involved in a nation and a country that has offered so many opportunities to me. So I guess all the components of that would be a definition of pride. I'm uh, immensely satisfied.